So, I have been using the Vivo V17 Pro for quite a while now. And I know it's not just a late review, it's a late, late review, but I'm here with it anyways. To be very honest, I had been having mixed feelings whether I should make a review video out of this or not. And that's not only because I don't see this as a worthy upgrade from the V15 Pro, but in the last six months, uh, Xiaomi has launched the K20 Pro and Realme has launched the Realme X2 Pro and so on and so forth. Therefore, the competition has gotten even more fierce. Now, what I had always liked about the V series in the past is how they brought new stuff to the table with every new phone. The V11 Pro was the first mid-range phone to have an in-display fingerprint sensor. The V15 Pro was the first to introduce a pop-up camera. And not just that, all of the V series had good cameras and good designs. The V15 Pro was even India's highest selling phone under 30,000 IC. But I feel the Vivo V17 on the other hand could have been much better overall. The first thing to talk about here is the choice of chipset. Herein we get the same Snapdragon 675 that we got on the older V15 Pro. And I think this is the one area where Vivo has made a big big compromise. In comparison, you get a much faster Snapdragon 855 on the K20 Pro and Snapdragon 730G on the Oppo Reno 2. And if you're buying a phone upwards of $400, the Snapdragon 675 does not make sense anymore. The day-to-day -day performance like browsing, messaging and playing light games is good. But when it comes to high-end games, the V17 Pro takes a serious hit. You can only play PUBG smoothly in medium settings and HD graphics. Whereas in the similarly priced K20 Pro, you can play it in the highest of settings. Also, I might be nitpicking, but I don't quite like the design of the V17 Pro. Although Vivo uses a glass back, it feels way too heavy for a phone of this size. One reason could be its chunkier and wider pop-up camera that makes the phone non-ergonomic. I also would find a lot of dust accumulated on the pop-up module, so I had to constantly clean it before taking a selfie. However, the front of the V17 Pro is really good. It is one of the best things about the phone. It uses Samsung's E2 AMOLED panel and the quality of it is just so amazing. It's definitely better than the K20 Pro. While we're talking about nice things, the battery is also good. This time, there's a 4100mAh battery on the Vivo V17 Pro. And we know that Snapdragon chipsets are usually power efficient, so this huge battery paired with an AMOLED screen is sure to give you a good battery life and it certainly does. On normal usage, it gave me over a day and on medium usage, I got a day's worth of juice. About the cameras, you get a total of 6 of them. The back houses 4 cameras, a primary 48 megapixel lens with Sony IMX582 sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 13 megapixel telephoto 2x zoom lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. You can also do macro photography with the ultra wide angle lens. And this one is better than what we have been seeing lately on phones like the Realme XT or the Redmi Note 8 Pro. At the front, there's a dual camera setup, a primary 32 megapixel lens and an additional ultra wide angle lens, which I would not say is completely unique, but certainly better than what we have been seeing. That being said, the 48 megapixel primary lens performs well. You get good details in the images and the colors look nice and punchy too. The color tone isn't very accurate as the images shift between warmer and cooler hues, thus giving you inconsistent results at times. However, it's not a big issue. I also like the portrait images from the V17 Pro. You get good subject focus and background blur. Edge detection, however, isn't very accurate but is only visible if you zoom in the images. The third lens for the wide-angle images produces good color and the images are fairly detailed as well. The fourth lens offers 2x optical zoom and the images are what you can expect from a 2x zoom lens. So nothing extraordinary here. Like the primary 48 megapixel back camera, selfies are also really good. It's vivo so we cannot expect the most natural of selfies but they do look good regardless. Portrait selfies share the same story in terms of quality, but the edge detection is not that proper. You get wide-angle selfies here as well, which comes in really handy while taking group photos. The HDR feature in selfies works very well. Even when the background is exposed, the cameras work to balance it out. 
so your selfies usually look better on the V17 Pro as compared to its competitors like the Reno2 or the K20 Pro. Also, comparing the back cameras, I would say there's a slight advantage in V17 Pro camera in its HDR capability, but the cameras are nothing extraordinary or at least they don't stand out among the others in several other aspects. Like say portraits, where I think the K20 Pro does a better job overall. Vivo has also introduced a new camera interface here, which is a bit confusing. There's a dedicated portrait mode, but you can also click portrait images from the photo option. Similarly, there's a beauty mode, which you can only find inside the portrait mode. You get an ultra wide angle option in the portrait mode, but you cannot click wide angle portraits. So the new camera app isn't as refined as I would have liked it to be. Add to that the Fontouch OS, which I think, like seriously, Vivo needs to revamp its UI in its upcoming products. Okay, by now it's evident that I would not recommend the Vivo V17 Pro. And don't get me wrong, it's not a bad phone, it's just that the competition has gotten better. In fact, it's gotten a lot better and Vivo is not catching up. And I think they've made a huge compromise on the performance, whereas other smartphones are providing better SoCs at this price range. On a different note, I feel like there isn't any wow factor with the phone too like the previous V series phones used to have. And this has really reflected with the sales the Vivo V17 Pro has managed to generate in comparison to the V15 Pro. Oppo's F series had the same issue earlier and now they have abandoned the F series and brought the Reno series to its mid-range segment with uh, cleaner designs and premium features. So maybe Vivo could do the same with its next series or maybe they could improve the next iteration of V series by providing competitive specs. So that was our review of the Vivo V17 Pro. What do you think about the device? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.